once upon a time, a Broadway-obsessed kid had big dreams of moving to New York City to pursue a career in theater, and spoiler alert, she made it happen. She is Jennifer Ashley Tepper, Broadway historian, producer, and author of the Untold Stories of Broadway series. So, Jen, since we were last together, a lot of things have happened. You produced a hit Broadway show, <laughs> Be More Chill, which I love so much, and you've got another volume of the Untold Stories of Broadway. This is one of my favorite theater books. Volume four, tell me about your baby. You know, I've interviewed about 300 theater professionals for it, and it was so special to kind of be kept company by them during this quarantine while I was writing the book. Why did you want to come out with this book now while Broadway is still not open? Writing it reminded me just how essential theater is, and I think that it was wonderful to kind of keep the flame burning of these stories during a time when theater is on pause. It gave me a lot of hope for the future. Yeah, and also a portion of the proceeds will go to where? The Broadway Advocacy Coalition, which we're really proud to partner with. Not only do you get incredible interviews that are in this book, but you also profile different Broadway theaters. So I say we, we go do a little Broadway tour. Let's head to Studio 54. I want to hear your secrets because I know there are some good ones. I can't wait to get back to shows because in this theater, when you are waiting online for the bathroom, you will hear some of the best stories ever. But I know you have secrets, <laughs> untold stories, and you know I'm gonna make you tell them. Absolutely, you know, one of my favorite stories I heard was about how there was a night infamously at Studio 54 where um, the alcohol was shut down, where it was like the liquor license is canceled. So people just kept doing drugs and drinking juice. And that's what life was like at Studio 54. <laughs> if the walls of Studio 54 could talk, what is one <laughs> story you think they would tell? Uh, life has been epic inside here. In your opinion, what makes Studio 54 so special? You know, Studio 54 is like the ultimate survivor Broadway theater. It didn't technically have a hit for 71 years, and yet it still is here with us. It opened, you know, during 1927. It was home of the Federal Music Project, employing artists during the Great Depression. It had all these fascinating lives, and it lasted until Roundabout took it over, and now it's a home of great plays and musicals. We're here outside of the Marriott Marquis. I'm sure there is a great story here. Yeah, you know, I was lucky in this book to tackle the five Broadway theaters that were lost to build the Marriott Marquis. In 1982, the Gaiety, Astor, Morasco, Bijou, and Old Helen Hayes were demolished um, amidst, you know, an uproar of protests and a really epic time in New York City history. A lot of actors from the original cast of like Nine and Dreamgirls to people like Susan Sarandon and Christopher Reeve were protesting the demolition. Uh, and when they would get arrested and carted away in police vans, they would sing show tunes on the way to the police station. Of course they would. But there was good that came from it too in that all of the remaining Broadway theaters were basically landmarks because of this uproar and these protests. What is unique about this block? Yeah, this is something that doesn't happen anywhere else. There are three Broadway theaters that all share a stage door. So if you're working at the Majestic or the Jacobs or the Golden, you have like a little hangout just out of street view. This is the Madonna door. Of course uh, Madonna it is. would sneak out here when she did a show at the Jacobs. Like Madonna, Madonna. Yeah. So, what <laughs> stories are you sharing in your book over here? I got to tell a lot of stories about the original production of Grease, which ran for a very long time at the Jacobs, then the Royale, including the longest running poker game on Broadway, which was in the basement for years and years. Tell me more about this poker game. <laughs> so, everyone, stagehands, musicians, and the stars from Elizabeth Taylor to Jerry Orbach would run to play a game of poker in the basement in between cues, even if they were working at other theaters. <laughs> Would they ever miss their cues? Apparently sometimes. I got some of those stories in the book. I love all of your books. <laughs> Do you just have any message to the theater community and theater fans? You know, keep the faith. Things are going to come back. We're going to be headed for a really exciting new era. We just have to like keep hanging on. I'll, I will hang on and I cannot wait for volume five. Thank you. <laughs>